Hey guys, Tammy again, here to take you guys through part number two of our skipping series. In part number one, we covered bounding mechanics. Part number two, we're going to start to talk about your hand positioning and arm positioning, making sure that we're using it efficiently. So let's delve into some of the common errors that we see. Fault number one that we see are people jumping with straight arms. So when they're jumping with straight arms, it's going to look something like this, where their hands kind of stay really rigid or they're doing something like this. Okay, a little bit awkward, a little bit uncomfortable. Remember when we're bounding and jumping, we want to be nice and relaxed. We don't want to be building up tension. Second thing that we're going to have a look at is when someone jumps with wide hands. Now, most people probably start with a relatively close jump, but as they go, their hands start to get wider and wider and wider and wider. And what happens to the rope when that happens is it gets shorter. So if I give you a little visual representation of that, if I'm starting with my hands in here, cool. The rope is now going to pass underneath my feet. As my arms are going out wider and wider and wider and wider, you can just see exactly what is happening to this rope. Either I'm going to have to jump higher or I'm not going to make it over the rope. The next couple of things can be one or the other. Having our hands too far in front of the body or too far behind the plane of the body. Knowing that when we go through this in detail, we're probably going to want to have our hands just in front beside our hips like this. So we don't want to be too far in front. We also don't want to be too far behind. Similarly, hand positioning in front or behind, sometimes people actually have an uneven hold of their skipping rope and it looks something like this. Now, again, just to give you a visual, visual representation of what happens when we have uneven holding of a rope is it no longer is gonna have this nice arc, okay? If I start to twist this to one side, can you guys see how that rotates through? So instead of the rope going forwards, over my body like this, if something's a little bit to the side, it's gonna start to go like this, which again, increases our chance of tripping on the rope. So we wanna try and create a nice, even spread of where our hands are, keeping that nice arc going over us the whole time. Similarly, we've spoken about our hands being either too far in front or too far behind. We can also have the same sort of thing happen whether the hands are too low or too high, which again is just going to change the positioning of the rope and probably also alter our jumping mechanics to try and accommodate for that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is your actual hand positioning. Sometimes people jump with their hands facing too far forward. More often than not, when people are doing their double unders, their hands start to creep out to this position here. So we don't want to be straight on. We don't want to be all the way out to the sides either. And we're going to talk about how to fix that in a second. And one of the final common faults that we see is just where people actually hold onto the rope. So we know that a lot of the action happens at the top here where it kind of spins around and gets its speed. So some people end up holding onto that, which is now going to stop the rope spinning around. Or they hold too high onto the rope with a death grip. Or they hold way too low on the rope and they've just got the little ends in their hands. Or this, the twist. So again, we're going to talk about the different positions in a second. So I've spoken to you guys about some of the common faults that we see. What we're going to talk about is the actual positioning that we should have. The easiest way that I've found to teach this was actually learnt from jump and rope. Molly did a great job of teaching both me and Ant how to skip properly and how to hold our ropes. But we implemented what was called the PVC pipe drill. So let me put my rope to the side to show you guys what this looks like. I am going to put the PVC pipe into the back of my elbows like this. And I'm going to place my hands just beside my hips. Now this is the optimal position for my skipping. So if I show you a few reps of jumping up and down on the spot, this is where I should be when I'm holding onto my rope. What you're going to notice is the shoulders are slightly hunched forward, the elbows are back, and the hands stay in line with my hips. This is pretty good. Now we also spoke about that hand positioning of whether it should be facing forward, out to the side. We shouldn't really have one or the other in any sort of crazy motion like that, but instead about a 45 degree angle is about right. Just understand there is a little bit of flexibility, but we never want to see them all the way out to the side or all the way forward like this. Just on that, something that I personally learned, and this is something that helped me a lot with my skipping, is that my rope was actually way too long for me. So my actual jumping mechanics and how I was holding the rope were really good, and I couldn't figure out why uh, it wasn't that efficient or why I had to take my arms out to the side slightly. And it was actually because the arc above my head of where the rope was was 
all the way up here when really it should only be as a gold standard about 10 inches above my head. So I worked from a rope that used to be, if I stood in it, it used to come all the way up to here for me. Now, this has taken time and taken practice to get it to this point, but I've found that using a rope that is actually this short on me works perfectly. Mm -hmm.